Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. They say that beauty's in the eye of the beholder, and I have to tell you, I almost scrapped this artwork, but I showed it to my tween daughters. They're both 11, and they loved it, so I guess it's a keeper. We're gonna use some masking tape, some gloss gel, acrylic paint, and a plastic bag to paint this masterpiece. Let's go to the table, and I'll show you how it's done. I'm working on a smooth painting panel. That way I know I'm gonna get a really good um, mask when I use my artist tape. And I made a little diamond template just by simply folding a piece of tracing paper in half and um, kind of cutting out one half of the diamond. Now what I'm doing is just tracing around the um, outside perimeter of this diamond template with a pastel pencil. And the reason I'm using a pastel pencil is because I can simply wipe away any marks after the painting is done with a wet Q-tip. After it was all sketched on, I used some masking tape to go around the circumference of my uh, design. And I left my lines of tape a little bit longer so I can trim them with an X-Acto knife later to get a really nice effect. To mark the inside pieces of my diamond, I'm simply taking my template and folding the edges to the middle fold. And then I'm gonna use that as a guide to mark the inside of my diamond and then tape it off. I'm sorry I used white paper and white tape. It's really hard to see, but bear with me. I think you'll get the hang of it. Then I went across the top part of the diamond where the edges kind of tip in, kind of at that murky shape, and I put another piece of tape across and just kind of bent it um, where the uh, middle goes up to the edge just to give it that kind of beveled look. And finally, I went in with my X-Acto knife and I just trimmed off any of the rough, loose edges of the tape that went beyond the perimeter of the diamond. And now we're getting to the painting portion of this project, and this is where I admit that sometimes things don't go as planned. What I've done here is taken a little bit of acrylic paint and a whole lot of uh, gloss gel medium, and I thought I would get the look of watercolor by doing this on my, um, on my painting panel. Of course, watercolor wouldn't stick to this painting panel, and I didn't want to thin down my acrylic paint with water because that would make it not bond very well. So that's why I'm mixing the gloss medium with the paint to kind of thin it down. And I wanted to paint with a plastic bag to kind of get some swishy cool texture in there. So I'm just balling that up and sticking it in the paint and then I'm just gonna dab and swirl it on until I cover the background. It actually gives you a really cool effect. It didn't look as watercolory as I wanted but I really like that glazy texture and um, I thought I might as well just go with it since I've already started the painting. And now I'm using some kind of lighter, greener, tealier kind of blue for the same effect, and I'm just kind of playing with it. The, the gloss gel is gonna make the paint dry a little slower, so you can actually play with it quite a bit and manipulate it until you get the look you want. Now, in retrospect, what I wish I did was I wish I picked like three or four really bright colors and applied them like this and just kind of didn't, maybe overlapped them a little bit, but kind of kept more pure colors, but that's not what I chose to do, and um, you'll see how it progresses. At first I wanted to keep a lot of white space around the edges of the canvas, but then I decided that um, it just kind of looked weird, so I did pulled some of that paint all the way out there. Now here's kind of where it started to go terribly wrong. I grabbed some gold paint and um, some more gloss medium and started pouncing it on there, but I really didn't like that. I thought maybe it would be cool to have a couple gold stripes going through there, and I really wasn't crazy about that either. And at this point, I figured I had nothing left to lose, so I started flicking on red, gold, and white paint thinned down with the gloss medium and a little bit of water just to give it enough space to move. And there I started to go back to the I want white space around my design idea again and just started tapping on some white paint along the edges. And when I finally felt that there was nothing else I could do to this painting to improve it, I decided I would remove the tape. And um, actually, it was kind of cool to see the design emerge after we've put all that paint on. I decided to take the tape off now rather than letting it dry just because with all that gloss medium and paint I was afraid that it would dry over the tape and when I pulled the tape off I would actually end up ripping some of the acrylic skin that was on there. So I decided to do this while the paint was still damp and try to be careful not to uh, smudge the wet paint. But if you do smudge the wet paint or you get a messy fingerprint on there I found you can easily remove the acrylic paint from the white area simply by dipping a q-tip in some rubbing alcohol and wiping it away. So that was really great. And I didn't actually have any pastel marks that I had to remove. I think the tape probably pulled it up and what the tape didn't pull up, it was hidden under acrylic paint anyway. So that made it really easy. So it's a fun, it's a fun project. You might want to try it with um, a different design, maybe a different color scheme. My daughters really liked it. So I thought that was kind of cool. It reminds me of like a 1980s heavy metal band, like album cover, but that's kind of cool too, I guess. 
Now I'm not sure if I'm in love with this painting or not still. I'd probably paint it over it if my daughters didn't like it, but hopefully you can take these ideas and use it as a springboard to create something unique for your home. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting!